Hey guys, okay, so now we gotta talk about decision analysis. And basically that's a fancy word for determining a, a choice, okay? And so right now what you've done is you've created these two concepts. We've, we've told you to create these two concepts, so hopefully we've got these two. Now, and now we need to create a formal way of evaluating those two concepts to choose one, to figure out which one is best, right? And what best means. Yes, and what best means. And so remember, you have two customers, as we've defined it for you, UAH and NASA, that you both need to work with. And so this video and this little section of the video is to discuss the formal method that we use at UAH and that we want you to use in evaluating these concepts. So Matt's going to give you a little bit more detail because we figured out the one thing you guys know more than anything is about cars, right? And so we're going to buy a car. And so Matt's going to go through this with you and Matt was going to say something. Yeah. Uh, even though this is, well, we're calling this a formalized decision analysis, you do this every single day when you get dressed to go to school. I know every day you guys are like, okay, it's cold out, it's snowy out or whatever, it's hot out. You know, and then you know the days when we come, you're like, I gotta look good for Matt and PJ because they always look styling, obviously. And so See, Matt's having a good hair day. Yeah, it's I'm having a good hair day. So I'm excited about that. And um, so in your head, you're thinking, okay, I can wear this, I could do that, I could, you know. So you're doing a decision analysis in your own head. You have different, um, <laughs> we're gonna call them figures of merit, which we'll talk about what that is in a minute. You have different criteria for what you should wear, but uh, it's just done all in the back of your head and. But what we're going to do, this is what engineers do, we take things that people do on a normal basis, we put them on PowerPoint charts and make them boring. So that's what we're going to do with decision analysis. Uh, any other? Do you have any other? So what you're going to do, because Matt's going to start explaining it, but he wants to make sure you understand you need to follow along in your book. So this starts on page 47. 82. A few slides or a few pages in the book that we put together about decision analysis. And so Matt's going to go over it, but this kind of gives you the meat behind it. So if you go, what did Matt say? Because you know you fell asleep while Matt was talking, which yes. I know you never do. But of course. Um, you can look in the book and it's actually in there as well. So remember that. Uh, because the ultimate objective, while this is to buy a car, you need to start figuring out which alternative is better for you, right? Which one does more for your science? Which one handles everything that you need? Because we've got to get that, that decision made pretty quickly. So therefore we can go into detailed design and the engineering analysis when Matt starts geeking out about the physics. Right. So we need to get you there first. So that's what this little lecture is about today that we're gonna work on. All right, so when you guys, raise your hand if you've heard of a car. You've seen a car, ridden in a car before? Thank you. So uh, you guys think about cars a lot. It's, it's gonna become painfully obvious really quick here and I'll just give you guys a heads up that I know very little about cars, okay? I'm a mechanical engineer, and I know the long pedal on the right makes it go. That's about the extent of my knowledge, okay? Seat heaters are nice, I do know that, but, you know... You know I he didn't tell you anything about the brakes. I know, his brakes, <laughs> don't need them. Um, so, uh, I don't know much about cars. However, I know you guys know about cars. So, I'm holding a paint marker, that doesn't work. Okay, so, uh, when you think about a car, what do you think about? What are some... After so, so, the game here we're going to play, we're going to play a game, sorry. The game is, we're going to give you guys... Um, a big a, a suitcase full of cash, okay? Un, an undisclosed amount of cash, okay? It's enough to buy a decent car, all right? And you get to keep the change if you don't use all the cash. So you can um, so you can go cheaper if you want, and you can keep the change and use that for gas or college tuition. You know, just saying, whatever you want to do. So um, so that's the game we're going to play. And PJ is going to interrupt when he sees that I forget something to do. All right? Just give PJ a heads up, really. So. Uh, don't worry, I will. So when you think about a car, when you think about buying a car, you know, you think about stuff you want to look for in a car. What do you think about? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Gas mileage. That's right. So um, gas mileage, um, so miles what he's, per gallon. What he's talking about now are sort of called figures of merit. Yeah, I was going to tell him that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> what's second See, thing? I don't know when to interrupt you now. Okay, so, so, so these are attributes. These are things you look for in a car, okay? And uh, in engineering, we call them figures of merit, or FOMs. Why do we call them FOMs? Because it's a fun word to say. That's exactly why we call them FOMs, okay? Figures of merit, but um, they're attributes. So what's another thing you look for? Cost, cost is also important, right? Cost, I'm gonna keep going. Um, 
Aesthetics is what you look for. Let's be honest, right? And I don't know how, I don't know how to spell aesthetics. So we're just gonna I'm gonna write some letters on the board and we'll just go with it, okay? But it's aesthetics. I hope it looks cool. Uh, T. I see. Okay. Aesthetics. And how it looks, right? And then um, options are always really important because you can't get the seat heaters without them. Um, options are important. Uh, the size of the vehicle is important, right? If you want, size is always important. Size, well, size is important. <laughs> not going there. Well, size is not something I'm going to make a joke about today. Uh, <laughs> what else? Safety is also important. I'm looking at a cheat sheet. Yes, you caught me. Okay, so safety is important. And for the purposes of this demonstration, safe, how do you spell safety? E D Y. And for the purposes of demonstration, we're going to do seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that? <laughs> That's six. That's six. We're going to do six. <laughs> six palms is where we're going to draw the line. Okay. So. Um, but you can have as many as yeah. you need that are true. Because what a figure of merit is, is it is a discriminator between things, between concepts, right? When you so, look for something, when you're shopping for a car, what do you look at that discriminates? This car from this car. Which makes this one go, ooh, that's neat, to that one go, ooh, that's yucky. Right. right? That's a discriminator, whatever those are. If they're the same, if they're not, they're not really fawns because they're the same thing. Right. It's like whoopie darn deal. So and they so, don't discriminate. They don't make you like one thing or prefer one thing over another. And for okay? a car, these are the these are some basic discriminators for cars, okay? So we're gonna so these are this is our fawn list. Fawns. I think we can see up there. Um, well, this this is the farm list. Uh, so um, no, I increased the field of view. Okay. So um, we're having a little side discussion here. Yes. Don't worry. So very important. Farms. Every farm you have on your team, uh, the, uh, every farm that your team comes up with needs to have two basic things: a definition. Everyone on the team needs to know what that farm is, and then a directionality. I call it directionality. A preference. Which is better, higher or lower? Okay. Some of them are obvious, but some of them are not so obvious, and we'll, and we'll make sure that we cover that. So, but the definition, the right to really show you know the definition, is form it as a question. Right. We saw that last semester with several high schools, <clears throat> and when they created it as a question, the definition, it really showed that they knew, and it actually showed their preference as well. Right. And so that was really neat to see, so we encourage you to do that in this as well. So, gas mileage, how efficient, how fuel efficient is the car? That's the, that's the definition of it, and, and of course the directionality, what, what do we prefer? We prefer higher gas mileage, right? So cost, cost is an interesting one. Do we mean sticker cost? Do we mean total cost of ownership? Do we mean cost of insurance? Do we mean cost of the gas? What do we mean when we say cost? And for this demonstration, it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. The point being is that when you guys come up with these FOMs on your team, you need to know exactly what these FOMs mean. Everyone needs to be in agreement. The last thing, or well, the second last thing you want to happen when you're in the final review is for, the, is, is, is for a board member to say, what does that FOM mean? And, you, and one person says, oh, it means total cost of ownership. And the other person says, I thought it meant sticker price. So you need everyone on the team needs to make sure you understand what your FOMs are. It's very important. What's the first thing, Matt? Uh, you don't want to meteor or hit the building. That's the first thing you don't want to happen during the review. The second thing is to not know what your problems are. Okay, so that's that's the no one ever asks what the. That's why he's <laughs> I've done this for like four years and said that exact same phrase. No one has ever asked me what the first thing was. Um, so cost, and again, let, let, let's just call this sticker price for the purposes of this demonstration. And um, what do you want? What do we want? Higher or lower? We want lower. Correct. Lower sticker price. So lower is what we want. Aesthetics, we want, I mean, if we, were, if we recall aesthetics higher or low, we call it higher, right? We want better, more, whatever aesthetics, cooler. Cooler. Options, same way, we want more options, better options, cooler options. Size, ooh, everyone just, everyone quite quiet. Do we want a big car or a little car? I'm pausing what they're gonna answer. But um, it depends, it depends, right? It depends on who's buying it. Do we want a big car? You know, if you're like a mom, like a minivan, you know, soccer mom, or do you want a sports car, you know, or, you know, so um, you want a Mini Cooper, or do you want a... You had your midlife crisis like you. Yeah, you want an SUV. I didn't, I had my wife's car, I just inherited it. So, um, but... Uh, your midlife, because you're right. Oh, uh, no, I don't want to talk about it. So, um, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so size is one of those, size is, size is interesting, because you, you'll see some farms that depend on what the customer wants, right? What does the customer want? And 
You, like PJ said in the very beginning, you have two customers. You have UAH and NASA, and for the most part, they'll see eye to eye. Sometimes they won't see eye to eye. And for example, one of them might be UAH wants you to use the fewest amount of resources as possible. They want you to use the lowest mass and the smallest <laughs> volume. They want you to be the, the smallest impact on their vehicle, okay? NASA doesn't really care. NASA wants you to do the most science you can do, okay? Um, and they don't care as long as you don't go over your, you know, your required five kilograms. They, you know, NASA doesn't care. And so that's why it's in the eye of the customer. And that's, you know, we're the customer because we're buying the car, so we're the customer. And so we decide whether it's bigger or smaller. And, uh, and if you guys have to choose, if you say, well, how do we choose between NASA and UAH? Um, basically, uh, you, you, who's going to beat the final review? Uh, that's just a little tip right there. And as far as UAH is concerned, NASA. yes, NASA is. UAH won't be there. So as far as UAH is concerned, we will be, but we're not really yeah, UAH. We're not really uh, We're not judging you. So um, as far as NASA is concerned, or as far as UAH is concerned, as long as you don't go over your, your five kilogram mass allowance, you're fine. Some, some of you may, some of you may ask for waivers, and you may have good reasons for that. That's also okay, but you need to justify it very well, and you need to get a waiver for it. But we'll talk about mass waivers later. However, so size is one of those, it's in the eye of the beholders. I'm going to put like one of these little sideways er arrows. Um, I guess you can do it up or down, I'm not sure. But we, we don't really know right now what to do with size, okay? Safety, you always want more safety, right? Five star, four star, whatever, the ratings, right? So safety, you want more safety. So. Uh, we've got definitions, you know, what's the fuel efficiency, what is the sticker price, how cool does it look, um, what are the different bells and whistles, uh, do they call it those, you know, like, can I get Bluetooth, iPod integration, seat heaters, you know, seat coolers, that's a new one, that would be really cool, okay. yeah. no pun intended. Uh, size, how large or small is the vehicle, and then safety, how, you know, if, you know, if I'm in an accident, will I survive? Number of airbags. Number of airbags, that kind of thing. So, yeah. um, so these are our figures of merit. And so my next question for you guys, are these figures of merit created equal? I mean, are they of equal importance to you? The answer, yeah, the answer is probably no. Um, so, so we need to apply a weight factor to them, some sort of weighting to, to, to show that some are more important than others, right? But something else you need to realize about these figures of merit is they're different. They're qualitative and quantitative Thank in you, nature, yes. right? Because <laughs> miles per gallon, right, that's a number. We, we see it on the sticker of a car. It tells you how many miles per gallon. It's by a standard test, standard procedure, right, all that. We call that a quantifiable, and we're seeing Matt go crazy over here going through the, the camera. It's a quantifiable thing. It's a number, right, that we can get and we can use. Cost is the same thing. Aesthetics, not so much, you know. It's, it's more of a mm, coolness factor, you know. So it's qualitative in nature. It doesn't have a hard number to it. And that's what's really neat about multi-criteria decision analysis, which is what we're actually teaching you right now, is you can use both quantifiable and qualitative things in there, different forms, okay? And so that's something you need to realize is that everything doesn't have to be a number, all right? right. It can be more of a, uh, that one looks better. You know, and that's some, a better scale. Sometimes even numbers, like if, 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 if one of the forms dealt with mass or something, Sometimes you might not know the exact number, but you have a feel, okay, we think this one's going to be heavier than this one. Right. So there's a relative value there. Yes. Um, so, because again, we're still kind of in the middle stages here. We don't have all the numbers yet. We don't have everything designed yet. We don't know what all our materials are going to be. So we don't know all the masses. We don't know everything yet. So um, sometimes you can use, sometimes the, the ones, the FOMs that would be quantitative, like numbers, you can use, you can do comparisons on those as well. So. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have our weight factor, our weight, that's a W up there. Um, but weights, we're, we're gonna restrict you guys. Everyone's gonna be, you know, everyone's used to, you know, is one through 10, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do, you can give a weight, a one, a three, or a nine. Just like on page, uh, like on page uh, 49 and 50, they describe, 49 actually describes the weighting factors. Um, you can give a one, a three, or a nine value, a weight factor for each of your phones. That's all that can get is a one, a three, or a nine. One being least important, nine being most important, and three being the middle. Did you say five? I did not say five. Did you say seven? I did not say seven. Yeah. Well, just say for just now. But you cannot know. <laughs> so one, a three, or a nine. And the reason we do this, if people are saying, why, why, you know, why, why one, a three, or a nine? You're flicking them off? And, yeah. uh, so, uh, 
The reason we do this uh, for several reasons. It makes you make a decision early on. If, if we said you could have any number one through five, it would be like five, 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 five. five, five, five. That's boring. It yeah. helps. That does not help us at all. Yeah. Um, furthermore, it, a one, a three, or a nine um, gives us a, a, a definite winner. Typically, typically there's um, one answer or one design alternative that's going to end up being the winner, and that's important. The the third worst thing that can happen when you do a decision analysis is to do the whole thing and spend all that time and not get an answer from it. It's to say, okay, we tied, or this is not conclusive, the information. Um, so you want to make sure you, if, if you spend all this time doing a decision analysis that it gives you a decision. So the weight factors are a one, a three, or a nine. And again, one being least important, nine being uh, most important. Uh, okay, so PJ's going to entertain you while I draw these lines. And uh, <laughs> da, 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 da. so, um, all right. So gas mileage, how important is it? One, three, or nine? Very, very nine. Cost, how important is it? <laughs> nah, low. Again, it's a sticker price. Three. It's about a middle. Aesthetics. Let's be honest. Aesthetics. You want cool crap? Yes, nine. Uh, options. Another cool crap. Yes, nine is very, very, yes. Size. What do we decide on size? Yeah, it's middle of the road, yeah. We don't really, can't really define which way is better anyway, so. Three. Safety. You're young. You'll go survive big, anything. Go big or go home. Let's give it a while. You're one. flexible. Yeah, you're, you're flexible. flexible. Yeah. You, can. you will heal. you got so many years to heal. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So, these are our weight factors, nine, three, nine, nine, three, one. You always want to go back after you, after you assign weight factors, you always want to go back and go, does this make sense? So you go back and you look, does this make sense? So the most important things we have, sorry, most important things we have are gas mileage, aesthetics, and options. Does that make, yeah, that's probably pretty accurate. For you. For you. See, okay. that's the point, is we're buying a car for you. Yes. Right? If I was doing this, safety would be my number one thing, because I have babies. Yes. I have little teeny tiny children. And my entire goal is if I'm in an accident, I want every airbag on God's green earth to deploy and my children go yeah. and don't move, right? right? Not so much for you. You don't care about that right now. No. You know? Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to give up maybe miles per gallon or cost. I pay for something more. Definitely aesthetics. Just yeah, mm -hmm. see I don't care about it being cool no more. They're definitely anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they actually are cool. He just doesn't want to admit it. I do like them. Yeah. I do. So see, I'll give up some other things. I want my options. I gotta have my options. Yeah. I got the Bluetooth, the heated seats. Cause see my butts, I need the warm butt. It's right? like a gateway drug. Once you go, once you go to see heater, you never yeah. go back. Yeah. But see, I would change this because it's me. So again, this is weighting. These importance factors are being weighted per the customer. Right? And you guys, the high school students, are the customers in this case. Right for the car. So when you do this for your payload, you've got to think. What do you think is the most important, middle importance, and least importance for NASA and UAH, right? So you've got to remember that when you do this. This is not about you. This is about what the customer is feeling, right? So remember that. Thank you. Anyway. Yes, and so now we, now since, and you'll notice also, we have no alternatives up here. We our, haven't thought about them. Our yet. figures of merit are Even independent. They're written down here. We yeah. really they're independent of the alternatives, and that it, it's difficult because you've already come up with your, with your alternatives. Now, now we we're just asking, take them and set them aside. Yeah. Now we're asking you to come up with FOMs, but try to think about this without thinking of the alternatives in mind. We we see we see in the past where one of the teams will put like you know is blue as a FOM, and one of the alternatives is blue. Shocker. Yeah, and it won. Yes, which wins? That's <gasps> kind of obvious, yeah. and the boards don't like that because no. it's obvious, and you're gaming the system. It's, it's easy enough to game as it is, so <coughs> don't make it obvious at least. So the FOMs are independent of the alternatives, and um, you know, in this case the cars, or in your case, the alternative designs. So uh, what uh, three cars we're going to use? We're going to use three cars. Let's go, let's go big or go home, right? The first one's going to is going to be a Lamborghini. So a uh, Lambo, if I can spell, Lambo. Second one's gonna be a Ford F-150. F-150, get the trucks in there, the people that like trucks. And the last one, we're gonna go, yep, Honda Accord. I'm gonna make all my lines straight. So, um, that's not straight. I uh, know, Accord, Honda Accord. So, what you do now is you apply a score you score each of these alternatives, these design alternatives, the cars in this case, you score them all 
with respect to the single fob you're looking at. So we're going to score Lamborghini, F-150, or Honda Accord per each of these, for each of these rows. And now, uh, also important is we're, we're going to apply the scores. are also going to be a one. That's off the screen, I'm sure. A one, a three, or nine. The scores are also one, three, or nine. Okay. But um, did you say five? I did not say five. Did you say seven? No. But earlier, only when I was saying, I didn't say it. Right. So, um, so we don't want to see those. That's the point. And you don't have to have a first, middle, uh, most in every. You can have ties. Yes. You can have situations where you don't have. A, um, a three or a nine or a one in, in any single row. Right. It's just how you guys think this work, you know, how you guys think these should be scored. And we'll go through this and it'll make sense. So gas mileage, which, you know, which is best? Uh, how does the Lamborghini? That's the one. <laughs> F-150, maybe a three. So, no, it's a one. It's <laughs> like a uh, one. And then the Accord, you need to help me out here. And then the Accord is the nine. Yeah. Honda Accord is incredible gas Actually, mileage. Actually, about the F-150 probably is a three. It's well, probably better than the Lambo. I've done the math. We're sticking with this. And uh, or you could put also a, a comma. And that's three. true. If there is dissension, if there not dissension, if there is disagreement in the team, you can put a comma in there. And uh, but if you explain this to the that's board, a crazy that's a three. Very, a very bad three. Um, you can put a comma in there and uh, give an alternative number. And what you do is you calculate using the first number and then calculate using the second number. We'll talk about the calculations in a second. So cost. Um, now cost, okay, we want lower cost, right? We want lower cost. So which, which car gets the highest score, okay? Remember, ultimately overall, the highest score wins. So we don't give the highest score to the highest priced vehicle because we want cost to be low. So we give the highest score to the lowest Lando. priced vehicle. The Lambo. No, not the Lambo. Lambo's like 100 grand or 250 grand. So, Are you sure? Yes. I looked it up on Wikipedia. No. Um, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. But uh, it's expensive. So we're giving the Lambo is a 1, um, the F-150 is a 3, nine. and the Accord is a 9. So because that's the Accord costs the least of the 3, okay? And that's why we want low cost, and the score, ultimately at the bottom, the highest score wins. And so since we want low cost, the lowest cost vehicle gets the highest score. Everybody follow? I say this a lot because teams mess this up. When we go from a high preference to a low preference, they get confused a lot, okay? Just want to make that clear. That um, this is just so, so if you have something that relates to mass as one of your farms, make sure that, uh, and the preference is low, and the preference is low, make sure that uh, you give the one, that, the one with the lowest uh, mass expectation or something like that the highest score. Everybody understand? Good. So uh, aesthetics. All right, aesthetics this is gonna be fun. So what do we got? Um, and then wood. So yeah, the Lambo is a nine, F-150 is a nine, and the Accord, let's be honest, is a one. They're all right, but you know. So options. Are all nines? Yeah. Options. So pretty much, you can get pretty much all the options on all the vehicles nowadays. I mean, the Lambo might come with wings. I don't know if it does yet, but um, that was a joke. Um, <laughs> But basically, options are pretty much standard across the board. Bluetooth, seat heaters, stuff like that. So, um, so now let's go back to options as a, as a FOM. If we, PJ said that these are supposed to be discriminators, right? And if it's a tie- it's Supposed to help you pick. It's supposed to help you pick. If it's a tie across the board, no pun intended, if it's, a cry, if, it's, if it's a tie across the board, does that help you choose anything? Negative. So what we do is, is we leave it up there in the chart. We draw a line through it to indicate that it was a tie, we're not using it in the calculation, okay? We're not going to use it in the final calculation because it'll mess up our percentages. But we want to show the board that we thought that this, that this was important enough to include as a FOM, it just was a tie, so it's not going to be used, okay? It's, it's, when, when I'm on a board, I like to see what the teams list as their FOMs because it lets us see what the teams think is important, okay? so. Keep it as a font, keep it up there, and then when you talk about it, you can say options was a tie across the board. We left it up there to show you we considered it an important font, but we marked it out because it's not used in the calculation. Okay? So, that make sense? So size. This is a tough one, to be honest with you. I'm, trying to, I'm kind of torn about this. Like an old sweater. Um, so, uh, do we go Lambo's small, F-150's big. So where do we give the high score? 
Not in a course, kind of probably like not a course in the middle. Yeah. In between. So what what, what do we do with that? Do you know what? We, uh, what we typically do is in situations like this where it's so subjective, so dependent on the customer that we can't compare these. We we, we this bomb is important, but we can't use it for comparison's sake because. Uh, of the nature of the farm. We don't know the customer that well. We don't know the customer that well, correct. We leave it up there again, mark it out, don't put a score in there, and tell the, tell the, so the customer knows that we considered this important, but we didn't know the customer well enough to establish farms for it, or to establish scores rather, I'm sorry, for it, and, um, so, and it's not used in the calculation. So basically it's gone. Last one, safety. Important stuff, right? Safety. Uh, what that thing? So we're going to score that. The Lambo, it goes like a million miles an hour. Let's be honest, there's like no seat belts in it. So it's a one, F-150. There's no substitute for steel. I mean, it's just raw mass, right? So and you can roll over everything anyway. Just run over the Lamborghini. And, uh, and then the cord, yeah. And the cord is kind of middle of the road. It's got this pretty safe, but it's, you know, it's no F-150. So, um, so there we go. I'll probably put a three here too. Okay, so I'll put that as a three and mess up all my calculations. Yeah. So, uh, I don't like aesthetics for F-150. Yeah, the way the math works uh, on this is it's the weight. So this weight value, th these values right here. You can use the other color. I know, oh, I can't, can I? These, the, the, these are the weight values, even though we don't use these at all. And we multiply the weight, so it's weight times the score plus weight times score plus weight times score plus weight times score plus weight times score plus it and then there's a total of the, the bottom. Weight times the score? It's the weight times the score. Okay. And there's a total at the bottom. So nine times one is nine, three, eighty one. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. One. That runs before check my yeah. So uh, we got a nine times I'm gonna use this first value here because that's what I've already calculated. Nine, nine, eighty one, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. This is a nine. And a 81, 27, 9, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, 3. And so the total scores that we have are 94, 94 for the Lambo. 108. What, 108. 120. 120. So in our first run through with uh, 1 here and 9 here uh, for the, uh, the a court's going to win. Okay, and our second run through, when we, when we change this 81 to a 27, the, accord, the accord's gonna win even more. Uh, and this nine going to uh, 27 won't make that, won't make the difference between this 81. So the accord's gonna win, okay? So what you do with these, with these commas, if, you, if there's disagreement, if there's disagreement in your team. Yeah, I like them Yeah, so I can't imagine your teams would have any disagreement at all. But if there is disagreement in your teams on the, on the, on the way these are scored, then you run it through multiple times. Basically, you do it multiple times. And so, the Excel. Our, if, if, if you got, if you guys know how to use it, Microsoft Excel. This is made for it because it's just multiplication and then addition down the columns. And so it's it's quite easy. You can actually put a couple of cells here. This one would, for the, you know this would be the, the cell for the you know you know for the raw score then the multiplied score. So you'd sum it down. And so uh, <laughs> this is made for Excel. And then and then once you get it set up in Excel. You can change the weights or change the you know, change the weight values if there's disagreement in the weight values or, or, or disagreement in the scores. You can change some of the scores to see if that impacts the total. Generally speaking, we tell the teams if there's uh, if if they're less than 10% difference, then it's basically a tie. Um, and you'll see right here that 120 10% of 120 is 12, right? And so that's exactly 10%. So it's not less than 10%. Um, so the accord still wins, but because we make so many assumptions during this decision analysis with the weights and the FOMs, we make so many assumptions, we give ourselves plus or minus 10% basically. And um, so, so you want to have a clear winner. And if, and if you're inside 10%, then you should look more closely at those weights and those scores and your designs in general and see if there's any, uh, you know, any other FOMs you can come up with or see if there's any sort of... Uh, you know, you know, if there was something you didn't think about when you're going through this entire thing. And one big thing to note right now, the one that does get the highest score is the one you choose. Correct. Okay? We have had teams before not do that. And that just defies all logic. Because if you still pick one that doesn't score the highest, there was a FOM you didn't tell us about. 
Because there's still something there that's telling you, you know, I don't care what this says, I still want the F-150. Then there's something there. There's some reason why the F-150 still wins for you. And that's a figure of merit you haven't told us about. For so instance, if you don't do that. Okay. If, if part of this, if, if we were saying we're going to go haul some stuff, or if we're going to go, you know, if we wanted to, you know, tow a trailer or something with this vehicle, then we should have had um, towing capacity as a FOM. Yeah. And the F-150 would have kicked butt in that category. Can yeah. I say that on video? I can say that on video. And so, so if, if there are other FOMs, or, or like PJ said, we, 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 we've seen it before where teams would go, you know, I know the Accord won mathematically, but we're picking the Ford F-150, then you're missing some FOMs, okay? And um, so go back and think about that. And also what this does is allows you to see where the strengths and weaknesses are of the choice. Yes. Okay, so the Accord won, right? 120. She didn't win everything, you know? Let's see, she won MPG, she won cost. Uh-oh, look at there. Aesthetics. Ugly. Which we said, we, this is very, 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 very important to us, right? This was a deal, it got a one, right? But the Lambo and the F-150, uh, 293, whatever, right, they got higher. So could we take some of the features of the Lambo and put them on a cord? That would look like a freaky vehicle in my opinion, but it could happen, right? Or could we take some of the features <clears throat> that, the court, that, the other, that the others did poorly in and add those to the, you know, right. so. So we want you to do that with your, your two designs as well. So you're gonna have two concepts and one concept shouldn't win everything. So then you look back and go, huh, can we take the parts of the other concept that are strong, put them with the concept that we, we picked and make a super concept, right? right. Concept three. So that's what you're gonna do. So this also helps you do that. So remember that as a part of this. So you might end up coming in and creating a new super car, right? That's right here. And you make it to where it gets all nuns down through here. And that would be your goal, is to create a design that makes every farm, it, it scores high on every farm. And this, right? this doesn't make, it's, it's tougher to do with cars because the cars are discrete objects that we can't push together. But, but with your design, concepts you can. with your concepts it's easier to do. Yep. So lastly, since, okay, everybody get this? We're good here. This is in your book on page 51, by the way. You can fill that in. We're gonna have some supporting material we didn't mention yet for, uh, for this and for what we're going to talk about in just one second, it'll be online on the downloads page. Make sure you go and download it. Uh, it'll be called the uh, Figure of Merit uh, presentation or something like that. It'll have the word FOM in it. Let's just say he that. doesn't know. I haven't made it yet. I haven't made it yet. But it'll have the word FOM in it. Just look for the word FOM on the right-hand side of the downloads page where you know, it says presentations from the videos. Uh, look, look for that there. Because just FYI, we are in Charleston this weekend, yes. and Matt left the baby Mac, the computer at home. Left my computer at home. And so he's just not happy. I feel weird right now. Yeah, so see, he can't even think straight about what he'll call stuff because yeah. cause the computer's not here to help him out. Don't know what to do. Yeah, because you know, you see him every time when he comes in, he's got that backpack and he's got the computer mm -hmm. and everything. And it's just not here right now, so he's just feeling really flipped. My, my whoopee, yes. Yeah. So uh, the next few minutes here, we're going to uh, we're, we're going to tell you. Okay, so this is all fine and dandy, right? How does this relate to your payload at all? Does this how Nothing. does this, how does this help you with your payload? Is this zero? If you put aesthetics as a farm, unless and I'm just going to tell you this right now, if you put aesthetics as a farm, you better have a really good reason for it, okay? <laughs> Um, so it's like really not we had many, many one people. team in five years that that worked for, and right. that's been it. So yeah. we don't um, care so how cute it looks. These will not be the farms for your payload. I can yep. pretty much say that. The gas mileage, I know it won't be. So, um, but so we're going to help you with some farms for your payload. PJ is going to on that side of the board. So PJ is going to talk about them real quick. Uh, so when you think about your farms, think about what is. What is important in your mission? What is important to your customers, right? You've got to think about what's important to the customer. What's important to your NASA customer? What's the most important part of this mission? Science. That's right. Science. It's like, what? <laughs> science. <laughs> it's right there, number one. What are you and, uh, <laughs> science objective. The, the science objective. You can start writing if you want. Um, you want to write? You want me to write? You said I'm going to talk about it. Now you're just talking about it. Okay, he's going to talk about it. But I'm getting them started. So the science objective is the number one fall. Okay, so what Matt didn't tell you, so now he can write, uh, we sat down and thought about some fonts for you because we realized this is a pretty difficult thing for you to sit down and go, oh dear lord, you're making us now think of like what NASA is and what UAH is, but we're high school kids, we don't know that. 
So we sat down and thought of several foams actually on our way to Charleston that you can use. And so what we're going to do is create a PowerPoint slide. And this PowerPoint slide will be the uh, foams, is probably what it will be called. And it will have already predetermined seven figures of merit that you are to use in this analysis. And then what we want you to do is come up with three more. Okay, so we're not making you do much, just three. So that's a total of 10. And that's how you'll analyze your designs, okay? So the first one was science objective. And Matt is continuing to write right off the board, isn't he? Uh, so the first one is science objective. And so the, the question is, how well is the science objective answered, right? So you've got to sit down and think about, this is the science objective. Here's the two alternatives we have. Which one best answers the question, right? That's what we're after. Which one gives us the most data or the quality data or whatever? That's what we're after with that one. And you guys are going to weight your phone. We're just giving you some... We're just giving you the phone. We're not giving you the weight. We're not giving you the score. We're not giving you anything. With, with the question, we're probably giving you the preference, but we want you to figure that out, okay? And so what you're going to do is take each of these phones and in the three that you create and do the preference, the weighting, and then score them, evaluate them with your two alternatives in mind, right? And you're going to have to explain that to us. The second one is the likelihood of achieving... What the world does this say? Science objective. No, likelihood of achieving the project requirements. Okay. Matt has awful handwriting. Mm -hmm. uh, so what that one is, is we gave you project requirements, right? Five kilograms of mass, volume, don't hurt us, survive, be autonomous, right? What's, what's the likelihood of you doing this with these different designs, right? Because you still don't know. You, you're making this stuff up, right? And so, because there's nothing concrete. We didn't calculate a number yet. You haven't worked with Matt yet on the geekiness. So, how likely is it that you're going to actually be able to do this with the constraints we gave you, you know? So, that's that one. Uh, the third one is science-mass ratio, okay? And so, what we do is, is you've got this five kilograms. How much of that five kilograms is dedicated to pure science, right? We, we look at it in engineering as there's science, there's the instruments and all that stuff, and then there's the support equipment, the uh, CPU, the antenna, the housing, the structure, you know, all that kind of stuff. What? Transmitter. Transmitter. All that kind of stuff, right? So there's all that support equipment, but how much is actually allocated to science? So we want that ratio, right? And so we're thinking maybe higher is better. So the more science you can, the more uh, mass you can allocate to science, the better, right? So I actually just gave you the preference. Whoops. So let's switch here in a second. Right. right. You're in front of the okay. Number four is design complexity. Basically, that is which design has the most parts, the most stuff, right? Because the designs, there's two designs, and one of them has more stuff than the other one does. You know, elements, parts, pieces, whatever you call it. There's just more stuff, more crap that goes into that one. So, which one has more? Because complex actually is not a good thing. Simplistic, right? We want simplicity, so simple, we want the opposite. Simple is good. Yeah, simple is way better. Likewise, number five, five yes. is ConOps complexity, the concept of operations. You might have a really simplistic design. It's like one piece, one part, right? But it's got to go through 50 billion steps. That's not fun, right? That's, that's too complex. So that's what we're after there. So uh, which designs ConOps uh, requires the most steps to achieve the objective is what we're after there. So because that's bad, right? If you've got to do a billion different objectives, a billion different steps to make this puppy work, Lord, I mean, it's called risk, right? It's operational risk because if one, one step doesn't work, you know, so we want that to be also simple. Uh, number six. six. Six is likelihood of mission success. So this is a global dude, right? This one is an all-encompassing going, well, how in the world, you know, which design has the higher probability of success? Just, and this is more, remember, this isn't a real number. We can't go with well, the probability of success is 0.93 versus 0.945. You know, we don't have that kind of number. But you got a hunch. I go on, you know, that number one one is probably more likely to do something and achieve something more than that stupid one we just thought up, you know? So, do that, right? That's what we're after on that one. And number seven is like the really, huh, one, okay? It's manufacturability, right? Because we've been telling you this whole time, this is conceptual, you know, you might create a prototype out of cardboard or styrofoam or something. 
but you're not going to build it. Well, what if you did, right? And so this one, manufacturability, is all about which one is easier to build, okay? So that's the point. You know, if we went out and said, all right, dudes, you just finished, make it. Which one would you rather us say, make it to, you know? Because the one you have to say, make it to, you're like, oh crap, that's got a lot of pieces, I got a lot of stuff to do. Or it's like, whoo, it's not that not hard to do at all. We could build that one pretty quick, right? That's what manufacturability is all about. So it's tough to make exotic shapes, it's tough to make, yeah. you know, lots of holes and real thin materials, stuff like that. So these are the seven that we are giving you and again, to evaluate your two concepts. This is, there's a PowerPoint with all this online. Yeah, so you'll be able to just fill it in, fill in the blank, right? So these are the seven. We want you to come up with three additional ones. At least. One, two, three. Now there will be three spots in the PowerPoint. Okay. Mm -hmm. don't, don't go crazy, okay? So three more, and you must define what it is. You know, you've got to tell us the actual title of the poem, and then your definition of it or your question, right? And then as well as do the preference, you know, the weighting, and then score them versus your two concepts. So you should right. have 10 farms total. 10, right? 10, 10. This is what we want, right? So 10 total farms. Because when we come see you in two weeks, when we come see you next time after the PSR, what we're wanting to see is that PowerPoint. You're going to get up and explain it to us. Correct. Okay? Because we got to make a choice. You're, you've been doing pros and cons, and hey, well, that looks nice. No, now it's, it's okay, we've chosen this. So we want right? you to have a decision. Yes, and decision. We, decision analysis results in a decision. Right. So you can, you can tell us which of your design concepts, which of your alternatives is the best one that you're going to go forward with and do a more detailed and, you know, design on analysis on. And tell us, and you can tell us why you're going to do it from these farms and right. mathematically prove which one is the best. Right. Now you can't have, remember the, the supercar, the third one, you could have already done that one too. You could say, well, we've looked now and we saw this was very positive in this area, but it was very negative in this one. And so we made this third concept. Cool. But we need a decision. When we see you, you better out of your mouth say, we have decided to go with concept blah because of this, right? And give it all to us at that point. That's what we're after. We've got to get this decision made so we can march forward with the rest of it. Right. Cool? All right, that about sums it up. Um, remember, this is, there's a PowerPoint chart. Please use the PowerPoint chart that's online. It'll have the word FOM in the title. It's on the downloads page on the right side where it says presentations. And it's been, it's, it's with the science and with the, whoops, with the uh, other presentations that we've had that were in the videos. And so um, use that because we'll be looking for that when, you, when we come with, to, to see you next time. Um, the, uh, you can go along with the book for uh, the, the doing, you know, you know, the buying the car. You can, you know, look at that. And, but the, and also the rules for the decision analysis are in the book. Remember, one, three, or nine for FOMs and for scores. For FOM, Five or seven? Negative, Ghost Rider. One, three, or nine for your FOM weights and your alternative scores. How about two? Negative. Sorry. 2.5? Maybe. No. <laughs> Just kidding. No, you're one, three, or nine. So um, that's about it. Again, if you have any, any uh, questions or issues between now and then, email, email us, email your UHPSC, um, have your teachers contact us. Um, please don't let a question about this, you know, we don't want to show up and you said, well, we had a question, we couldn't get it answered. No, 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 that don't fly. You know, um, we want, you know, please don't let a question get in your way. Please bother us until we answer your question or bother your PSC until the question's answered. Um, and if your PSC doesn't respond in a timely manner, let us know. Uh, again, uh, we hope that y'all had a good time with the P SR. SR, thank you. Uh, the PSR, we hope that y'all can, the comments that you get from that are um, helpful. And uh, we can't wait to see what you guys choose, what your decision is when we come to see you in a couple of weeks. Anything? Signing off from Charleston. Toodles. Bye.